This video is brought to you by Squarespace. So, uh, Avatar is pretty relevant again. So obviously, with this golden opportunity, I took to Instagram to see what kind of Avatar-related project you guys would want to see me do. And I got some overwhelming results. <gasps> guys, guys, a shoulder momo. A shoulder momo. So whenever I start a new project like this, I usually go on the internet to do a little research to see, have other people done this? If so, how did they do it? Could I potentially poach some of their techniques? And I'm not even surprised. Turns out the lovely, talented KP Creations has already made a Momo. And I mean, look at it. As far as I'm concerned, it is the most Momo Momo that you can possibly bring into the physical realm. So honestly, I don't know how I am going to possibly like improve on that or do anything close to that in this video. What I am going to do in this video is basically follow KP Creations tutorial in order to make my own version of a little shoulder momo because I just want one. So for design and build plans, I really, at the beginning of this project, was hoping to make it some kind of puppet and make him have some kind of movement up on my shoulder. But I had to kind of just take the L and admit, Kira, you have no idea how to do that yet. Hopefully one day in the future you will, but not today. So basically I am going to, instead of making a traditional sculpture, I am going to make an art doll, which has clay elements to it, but most of it is like a soft bodied, poseable doll. So that way you can get the detail of clay out of it with the face and usually like the paws and appendages, but the end result is poseable because you have a wire armature inside. So without further ado, let's go make a lemur skeleton, which is a phrase that I didn't think I would say in my entire life. <laughs> short so I want this shoulder momo to be proportional to me like a little bit above my head you know where he sits on Aang so I want to make sure that I get his height right whenever he's in like a little sitting pose so I am thinking maybe about that tall that lands us right around 15 inches maybe a little bit taller with the ears so I measured out a good spine length using the rough measurement I had taken and also guesstimated a good length for a tail. So I am really trying to push this into lemur anatomy territory because so often the anatomy that I do for any of my figures just defaults to dog. So I'm gonna really try to capture these straighter limbs and a spine that's a lot more upturned whenever it's like in an upright position. So this is very much the stance. Also look at those little hands. I really wanna capture these little hands. Lemurs are an underrated cute animal. I measured out a good leg length once again trying to keep actual lemur anatomy in mind and not letting myself stray into dog territory. I also knotted up a bit of wire on the bottom of each leg to serve as a base for the feet later on and started bulking up the figure with some foil in a couple of places. Adding a ton of foil right now isn't necessary because I'm going to fully bulk it up with quilt batting later on but having foil is going to help me visualize the proportions whenever I begin sculpting the head. And after all of that this is what my weird shoulder momo skeleton was looking like so far. It's pretty unfortunate without his little head but we'll get there. So for the head, I think I'm going to try to bring in some slightly more realistic lemur anatomy, but also still keep it very cute and kind of bug-eyed because, you know, that's still who Momo is. There's so many images and times where Momo is just radiating the most intense little guy energy, and I really want this to come through in the sculpture, even though I'm gonna try to make it a little bit more realistic. I think this art doll is a good reference for me. I also think that these sea fox I think is how you say it. Lemurs are a really good reference just because, I mean, if that's not Momo's blank stare, I don't know what is. As you can tell, I got really amped up to work on this project and then it took two more days for my clay to get here. So, uh... Now, I can finally start working on the head. But for the head, one of the first things I need to figure out here is how to do the eyes and like what eye shape and size I wanna have on this figure because Momo's eyes are very, you know, they're very. So I was not sure at all how I wanted to do this, but I did end up just like going online and finding some like little doll eye printouts. And then I put them in Clip Studio, kind of enhanced the color a little bit and then printed them out 
And this is what we're working with here. I do not know what size here I wanna do yet, but what a lot of people do is they'll have like printouts of eyes like this, and then they'll put a little glass bead or something on top of them so that you get that conical shape. So I'm gonna try to line up the size of one of these with these mosaic tiles so that I get a little bit more of that like realistic depth to the eyeball. Oh, that sound was deeply unpleasant. Check that out. <laughs> Those are some buggy eyeballs right there. I can like already see the Momo coming through. I think that is what we're going for. I need to figure out a good head size for Momo. So I think I'm going to sculpt the head separately from the body and then like put it on once it's fully baked because otherwise I think it's just, it's gonna mess up the weight and everything. So. I feel like lemur body is a little bit close to cat head. So that's sort of what I'm going off here. Yeah. Stab it. That's just for, for reference. Yeah. I, I think this will work for our purposes. So first I wanted to bulk up and shape the foil as much like Momo's head as possible to avoid having to add too much extra weight with clay. During this foil stage, I also want to create a divot where I can place the eyeballs so they aren't sticking too much out of the foil. I'm basically trying to create a skull shape here that all of the clay can then go on top of. Next I'm just cutting and conditioning a sheet of clay to wrap around the foil, and after getting the eyes into a good position, I'm shaping some wire into a general Momo ear shape and stabbing them into the head. I'm not going to be wrapping the ears in clay because they'll be getting a layer of actual fur later on. So next I'm rolling out little worms of clay to bulk up the sides of the face around the eyeballs And whenever I'm blending those in I'm trying to keep the brow lines subtle to make sure his expression looks a little bit nervous At first he was looking a little bit angry So that's something that I had to continually be careful about throughout the sculpting process So now I'm continuing to bulk up the brow area especially around the inner brow And I'm also shaping the muzzle a little bit more to be the correct shape from the front top and profile For the facial structure I did end up leaning a little bit more into a cartoony cute style because the eyes ended up being so big but I did go for facial anatomy halfway between like a lemur and a cat listen you cannot tell me that this is not a cat that's a cat. You said some very unkind things. Next, I'm adding another ring of spaghetti around the eyes to define the eye sockets and another layer of clay to the cheeks. And here I'm starting to roughen the actual shape of the nose with my fingers and adding a little bit of clay to the top lips and also to the chin. This is already showing me a good general place for the mouth to go later on. So now I'm defining the inner corner of the eyes with my sculpting tool and also roughly sketching out where the mouth will be. Now that I have a good foundation for the face, I'm moving on to the detail phase. I'm adding in some little nostrils with the small end of my sculpting tool and adding in a little bit more definition by smoothing those details out with some oil of infant. I'm doing the same for the mouth by defining the outer corners and carefully cutting out the shape of the mouth in between. After adding a little bit more clay to the chin, defining and cleaning up the mouth and nose even more with some oil, I went into a quick little round of detail to finish up the brow, eyelids, and eye sockets and also added some whisker holes. At this point, can I just say that he is looking so cute? So now I'm giving the entire head a little oil massage to make the clay a little softer to make it easier to add in detail detail, and then I'm just taking my sculpting tool and adding tiny little directional hairs to the face. During this whole process, I'm paying attention to the direction the fur might lay in, and I'm being light-handed to make sure the clay doesn't clump up. I'm also wiping off my sculpting tool every so often to make sure I don't leave traces of clay behind on the surface. I continued that process until the entire head had the illusion of peach fuzz by adding thicker and fuller indications of fur on the outside of the face and tiny details around the eyes and muzzle. This is how Momo's face turned out. I am so proud of him. I don't know, this is just one of those times where I sculpt something and I, I didn't know that I could make him look this cute and make him look this Momo. I am so excited to get him baked, but before I do that, he also needs some hands. For the little hands, like I mentioned earlier whenever I was working on the armature, I really want to capture all of the individual digits and even make them poseable if I can. So I'm really just covering the base of all of the paws in clay, basically the part that would be the palm to make sure that he has a good foundation to stand on. So then I just twisted up five tiny pieces of armature wire per foot to serve as his little fingers and I'm just going to insert each of those into the clay so they get baked into the sculpture. Of course I'm not going to be covering the fingers themselves in clay because I want to maintain the flexibility of the wire. I also added some little paw pads to the bottom of each hand to make them look a little bit cleaner, and all of the clay bits got detailed with a fur texture to match the face of the figure. Now, to the oven.
as a creative who does a little bit of everything whenever it comes to my content, it is difficult to have a cohesive social media where I can post all of my work in one place and make it make sense, which is why I like this video sponsor Squarespace for my portfolio needs. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for website and portfolio building, e-commerce, marketing, and analytics. You can easily get started building a website by selecting whatever niche you're in, and Squarespace will show you a wide selection of flexible website templates suited to your niche to get you started on your site. From there, in my case, building a portfolio is as simple as uploading my portfolio pieces and Squarespace does the rest of the organization for me. But with their website builder, Fluid Engine, it's still easy to be hands-on with the design of my site because they give you tons of building options with page templates and drag and drop features. Since I'm in a couple of different niches, I have an illustration portfolio on my main page and then I also have a portfolio for costume design and costume crafting. And since I'm also getting into the niche of crafting little guys, I can easily create a portfolio for that as well. And of course with Squarespace, your store can be hosted right alongside your website because they're great at accommodating whatever kind of seller you are, whether e-commerce is your main focus and you have a large operation with inventory and shipping to keep track of, or if you're a more casual seller like myself and you prefer to use print-on-demand through Squarespace's custom merch and have them handle inventory, production, and shipping for you. So if you want to create your own limitless sprawling portfolio, head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash pricklyalpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the peach lemur. So while I was waiting for Momo to bake and be in the oven, I also took the liberty of making a peach. I knew that I wanted to make some kind of cute little accessory for him. And I mean, name a more perfect Momo accessory. I'm sorry I didn't record it, but this was an impulse peach. So now that all of the pieces that need to be baked have been baked, I can start making him all fuzzy and turning him into a soft boy. And for that, I have bought some quilt batting. This is what KP recommended in their video. So I think this should work very nicely. I like that I can kind of wrap it in strips. The other thing that I have to worry about, um, it's becoming a trend in my sculpting videos. It's just like the general weight distribution that's going on. Obviously the armature is like not really bulked out at all at this point, but the head is probably a little bit too disproportionately large for the sculpture, unfortunately. I'm gonna try to like offset that as I build out the figure to make it look less weird, but obviously I'm gonna have to bulk out the neck so the head doesn't like droop over and end up looking disturbing and sad. So I'm gonna see what I can do about that. First I'm going in here and just adding a ton more wire to the figure to make sure I stabilize it and support the head and all of the appendages. Cause like I said, the head is pretty dang heavy. I'll be honest, I'm a little surprised that it worked cause I did find a good combination of armature wire to support the head and the entire body without it tipping over. From there, I'm just cutting out long strips of quilt batting and wrapping it around the figure in a way that I think looks good. I'm making sure to especially bulk out the back of the figure. Cause like I said, lemurs do be having that cat anatomy going on a little bit. I also glued a couple of mosaic stones to the hindquarters to kind of serve as a counterweight to the head. And I also went in and individually wrapped each one of his little toes with quilt batting, which is a very tedious long process, but in the end it was worth it. It ended up looking so cute. I feel like this would have been a great opportunity for needle felting, but I don't have a barbed needle and I also don't know how to do that. So I think that's gonna have to be a skill tree for another video, unfortunately. I'm so happy. Ah! Folks. Who is he? The little guy meter is it's off the scale right now. Look at this boy. Look at those hands. Look at that tail. I just couldn't be happier. He's turning out so cute. Off to defeat the Fire Nation, just me and my new son. Now I'm going to have to figure out some kind of like cosplay or thing to wear at a convention just so I can bring my son with me and just hold him. And you know that this is good and effective because right now, Someone is very jealous and mad at me. Do you like my cat? <laughs> he just he just ended up being the size of a cat. I love him. <laughs> Anyways, enough of that nonsense. Today, I'm going to be working on giving Momo a pelt. He needs to have his face and little hands painted. And then the big thing is going to be cutting all this faux fur that I have up. I'm gonna kind of try to like fit it to his body parts. And then I'm going to probably hopefully sew it on him. I'll be honest, there is a huge chance that I'm gonna get a little impatient and just use a little bit of hot glue in a couple of places. If you see me whip out the hot glue gun, 
I did warn you. This part of the project should be pretty straightforward, but I am going to be painting all of the markings that are on the faux fur with my airbrush, which can get a little dicey because number one, white faux fur and brown airbrush paint, and also just getting faux fur wet. I am a little stressed right now, but my solution for that is basically to just not think about it too much and hope that this goes well and I don't ruin the entire thing. <sighs> if worse comes to worse and I do get really paranoid about brown paint getting everywhere, there's always breaking out the heat gun and just pre-drying every single area, which is gonna take longer, but it might be worth it. Anyways, enough procrastinating. Let's get into this. Oh, and on that note, my peach is also done in the oven. There we go. Peach. This kind of looks like an apple, I admit, but I think some paint can fix that. So ordinarily for a base coat on something like this, I would break out the spray paint and just use some white for that, but I am too lazy for that today. So what I'm going to do instead is do a base coat of white by hand. That way I can just with a brush really get into all of the furry fuzzy bits because I've realized whenever I do a base coat with spray paint, it kind of clumps up and I lose a little bit of my detail. And then also this way I'm not gonna get any spray paint on all of the like batting that I've already done. Of course, I have a little bit more precision with my airbrush. So uh, I'll probably do a lot of the details with that a little bit later on, uh, at which point I will probably have to put masking tape on the eyes. <laughs> For now, we're doing this. Airbrush nozzle vanished. Hi there. <laughs> I need to regale you with the story of my current frustration. Fellas, I'm losing it. I am this close. Long story short, there is a piece that goes on the front of your airbrush that fits over the needle called the nozzle, and it's simply gone. I don't remember taking it off myself, but it's gone. I have no idea where it is, and it is so incredibly small that I have absolutely no hope of ever finding it ever again. How I don't remember taking this piece off whenever you need a special tool to take it off, I have absolutely no idea. Let me clarify. I have only removed this piece once before Ever. I remember doing so. I remember putting it back on. I do not remember removing it a second time. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I'm being gaslit by reality right now. So, um, I was really hoping to get some of the airbrushing on this guy done before I add all of the fur on because I wanted to add a little bit of a gradient around his face and then also his little paws at the bottom. But I also don't want to lose the time that I have to work on this tonight, so I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and add the fur and then order a new nozzle, wait for it to come in for like another day, and then I'll do the airbrushing after that. <laughs> I'm so mad. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Why do my cozy videos always deteriorate into pure chaos? So how I'm going to do the fur is I'm basically just gonna lay out the fabric and do a little bit of measuring all the segments that need some fur and I'm gonna just loosely trace and cut it out and then probably sew it on. We'll see how lazy I get. I have two types of fur from my stash. One is this, where it's sort of a the pile of the fur has a lot more length variation to it. And then I have this one that feels a lot more natural, but um, I'm gonna get into this. Uh, and whenever it comes time, I have also admitted defeat and ordered a new needle and nozzle for my airbrush. So I'm just gonna have to wait until that comes. It'll be fine. I'm angry, but it'll be okay. Let's give this naked boy some clothes.
Do you guys want to see the culprit? Do you want to see the tiny piece that derailed this project the other day? Come here. We literally put it in a tiny plastic container. And it's not this, as you might be tempted to think. It's this. Do you see that? <laughs> this is the piece that's suddenly gone that was causing all of my problems. I still have no idea where this went. Hey! Wouldn't it be funny if this wasn't even the problem and my airbrush was not working for some other reason? I really hope that's not the case. There's that tiny tool coming in. You guys want to see something? I don't even know if you can. I don't know if you can see that, but I found out where my old nozzle went. It definitely broke off and these are the threads that were left inside of my airbrush. Oh my God, it's so tiny. <laughs> At first I was not able to get the new nozzle in and this is why, because the old threads were still in there and the front of the nozzle is who knows where it's gone, <laughs> but that's where it went, it broke off. They're that delicate apparently. The threads can just be stuck in there and you would never know if you didn't try to take it out. So, okay, new nozzle is on and ta-da. She's working again. I just regained probably about six hours of my life. Let's finally finish Momo. So obviously now that I got my airbrush up and running, this process went extremely smoothly and every single step of this made me so glad that I didn't have to do it by hand because I know that it would not have looked nearly as good and it also would have taken me so much longer. There wasn't a ton of method here other than just spraying continuous amounts of brown, but I did go in first with some lighter tan tones and some pink tones to kind of lay down some color variation and then I layered the brown on top of that. That. And then I went back in afterwards with a lighter, more saturated brown, and I used that to fill in the bits of fur that I had missed. You know how when you pet your pet and their fur is a little bit different, like underneath that top layer as you slide your hand across? It kind of gave that effect, and I think it looks nice. Now, I did neglect to brush the fur out or make sure that it has any kind of logical flow to it whenever I was spraying the paint down, so it did dry a little crusty and in weird directions, but you know, I feel like that is the aesthetic of this Momo. He's more of like an outdoor feral Momo. <laughs> when you stick your head outside the back door and all the raccoons are eating the cat food, he's just right there with them. Now, as a finishing touch, because Momo is a flying lemur, I really wanted to add his wings in some way. I knew this would prove a little difficult without making it look really silly, so I kind of just cut out some small little wing looking pieces, painted them up to look slightly like Momo's wings, and then I just glued them on to the side of his little legs. Again, this is not really a realistic depiction at all, but at least gives you the impression of wings without making the front legs look super weird. Finally, I painted up the peach because Momo is a good cat and deserves a sweet treat. And with that, my sweet boy is finally done. Thank you for watching till the end of the video. If you can't tell, I am so, so happy with how Momo came out. He's definitely my version of Momo, but he turned out so cute. I can't wait to just have him sitting like in my office space so that I can look at him and get a dose of serotonin. Of course, this video would not have been possible without all of the great information that I got from KP Creations videos. So go check out her channel. She makes the cutest stuff. And if you want to get into making art dolls, the Momo video that she made is a really great start. 
It is a fantastic overview of the process and I certainly learned a lot by watching it. Finally, the biggest thank you for this video and for all of my videos goes to my wonderful patrons and especially my executive producers. Mossy Raven, Seno Takai, I'm not saying that name on the internet, ABW Makes, Samalama MC Samabama, Sarah, Crimson Moon 04, Liana, Ermler Jean, Anubix, Breeza, Sony, Brian, Phoenix, Rose Draconi, Freedom and Gus Gus, Francesca Sliwa, Kat, Dodo, Xyle S, Agent Dot Sketchy, Thea Maia, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, Megan Penland, Enozine, India Gloom, Hypnos, Katie, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, I Hang Out with Cats at Parties, and Bean the Bread. Dagger, I don't think you want to be standing there for this.